our Jews observe all of the Torah all of the I time. don't. But many synagogues are in fact filled with sinners. Every Jew is a sinner. Let me put it up. There's nobody perfect today. That, that train has passed a long time ago. We don't have Siddiquim today. That's gone. What we have are just normal people, Jewish, and we try to do the best we can. We, we will tell you that the Torah says XYZ. I may not be ready to do all of XYZ, but I tell you that the Torah is XYZ. I'm okay with that person. Mm -hmm. The person I have a problem with is the person who says, oh no, I don't do XYZ because the Torah doesn't really mean that. It means ABC. That person is a heretic. That is the problem. That is the problem. Perhaps Potiphar's wife would have been more successful with Yosef if she'd warmed him up a little bit with some questions about God and righteousness and the patriarchs before she flat out asked him for sex. Mm -hmm. She could have said she wanted to follow his God. Could he take some time out of his busy schedule <laughs> to instruct her privately in Torah, including the laws of family purity and all that jazz? A lot of rabbis have fallen for similar patter. Even I have proven weak on one or two occasions. Luckily, God and the police intervened before I could commit a sin. But that's not like, if you want to like seduce a guy, you don't go, oh, let's have sex. Like, if he's like a strong moral religious character, you say, oh, you know, I respect your religion so much, and, you know, I'd like to take some religious counsel from you. Could you help me with these religious issues I'm having, and could you study some Torah with me, and could you right. teach me about these laws, and, you know, and you're just kind of sitting there very close, like, you know, looking at the text, and you kind of like rub accidentally on him, and you put your hand on his knee, you know start bringing your hand up his knee towards his thigh and you like say oh swear to me like uh, Abraham and his servant swore to Abraham. Can I answer that? Yeah. Okay. His brother Yehuda, mm -hmm. it didn't need any warming up. A woman just came to him and said hey buddy. Yeah. You know let's let's go for let's go for a roll in the hay. Yeah. Why would Potiphar's wife think of being any different with, with the younger brother? Mm -hmm. This is a family that's rated you know, drop kick on the on the get go. Okay, I have another question. Now, part of his wife, he's very typical of many women, and that she has this great skill at making false accusations of rape. Oh, I, I'm so Why sick do of so reading many these women. Things? I don't know. Make false accusations of rape. Okay, you know what? I, I don't know why they do it. I think they do it for attention or for money. And also because they know it can really mess a guy up. Oh, you talked about this when we talked about that guy, Dudu, who lied to that woman. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And she went after him yeah, and everything yeah, yeah. because you said, like, they got a four-hour slut zone or something. Yeah, yeah. That they don't want to be lied to, yeah. and, you know. But, but like, NBA players, NFL players go through this all the time. All the time where women go, oh, he did it, and then they have a kid. that Get the paternity suit going. Get this mm -hmm. money. Because they think they look at it as like, wow, this is my uh, gravy train just came in, right? So they hit the jackpot if they get this guy to come inside them, right? Yeah. So I, I always listen to these stories with a grain of salt. Whenever there's a new accusation, you know, I always say I don't necessarily believe this at all. I was very slow to believe Michael Irvin and Dennis Rodman, you know, Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant, even Ben Roethlisberger. But since that time. I've come to like, I no longer believe Ben Roethlisberger. I don't believe Kobe Bryant because he settled out of court. But I do believe Dennis Rodman, and, and, believe it or not. And I do believe uh, Michael Irvin. Because these stories just come up out of the woodwork. And I just don't, it's just, after a while, it just becomes like noise. Women are trying to get money out of it. How does the Pharaoh talk about God when the Pharaoh is supposedly divine? Like the Pharaoh talks to Joseph about, like, surely God is with you. And the Pharaoh was regarded as divine by Egyptian society. So was he? Yeah, maybe he was a different kind of Pharaoh. Maybe he was. Well, a well, wait a second. Wait a second. Pharaoh. Wait a second. It says that they got a new king. Remember, like things were really good for the Jews. Yeah, a new Pharaoh. They got a new Pharaoh, and yeah. and and like either it was the same Pharaoh, but he had a change of heart, or it was a new guy came in. I don't believe that him in this story believed that he was divine. Yeah. Unless you saw it was written down in the Medrash somewhere, but I'm not aware of that. Now, are you not satisfied with your reward in the world to come? Do you expect also to live at ease in this world? Well, I don't expect anything good in this world. This world's a piece of shit for me, and I'm. What do you think you've got coming for you in the world to come? I hope it's some. I hope it's a flip flop of what we saw here. I hope in the world to come that my share is amazing, and the rest of you all can go fuck yourselves. Then you can experience what I experienced in this world, and I'll experience what you experienced in the next world. 
Uh, my luck, it'll just be an extension of this, and I'm just, you know, permanently fucked. Right? So. Now, in your essay on uh, Torah's yeah, Guide that. You to, to that Leader, in. you write that in many ways Israel's the eyesore of the Middle East. So, like, which, which country would you regard as a great country in the Middle East? I didn't say that. You, 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 I said, in many ways, it's the eyesore. Yeah. In many ways, it's not. Okay? So before I start listening off countries, you go, Oh, that one does X, Y, Z. Yeah, in many ways, that's also the eyesore. Okay? So let's, let's keep everything in perspective, in context. Medina Israel, the, the state of Israel is a secular, anti-Torah country. It's sitting on top of the Holy Land. If it was sitting in Kenya, this conversation would be a lot easier to have. Because, you know, like, there'd just be a bunch of Jews who have a country, and it's secular, and, and they desecrate the Shabbos, and, 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 the, and the women run around, and they dress not sneeze, and all this. But at least it's not on top of the Holy Land. Right? They're acting like a bunch of goyim. They don't keep Shabbos. They're acting like the like the low, the lowest goyim, right? Right? Yeah. But at least it's not on the Holy Land. But they take it to a whole new level of desecration when the Jewish nation, the Jews finally have their own nation after you know two thousand years or whatever, and it's 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 driving on Shabbos. It's gay pride parades, you know, in the holy city. I even saw an Israel corner. All yeah, yeah. Israeli actors I was, it, it, shot in Israel. Listen, I watched the whole thing. I was oh. appalled. I was so offended. You, you saw it that, was disgusting. I was in Tachanat Merkazit, which is the central bus station in Tel Aviv. I used to go there all the time, okay, to switch buses, you know, go from Yerushalayim or whatever. And, and everywhere, and this was in the 80s, was porn. Uh, what up, porn? What, what's that? Uh, Sex. Adult magazines or whatever. Magazines. That's all the. America, you had like four. You had like Playboy, Hustler, Penthouse, uh, Maybe three, right? In, in Israel, oh my God, there's like thousands of magazines are all over. Because I think it was Ben Gurion said, "You Israel will not catch up to the rest of the world." And it has prostitutes and thieves and the Jewish. Yes, you, you, and I'm thinking, you know, the from way is we're waiting for the Messiah. We're trying to bring the Messiah, and 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 and, and state of Israel, they're trying to bring prostitutes and thieves, right? I mean, you can't make this shit up, folks. And that's what you got. You know, I was in the, I was up in Sfat, which is like this. Oh, it's this holy Sfat. It's like oh, you know, you've been to Sfat. Yes, yeah, yeah. Holy, holy, holy. Friday night, right? You know, it's like Shabbos, Sfat. Woo! And then all of a sudden you hear boom, 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 boom. And like, what the hell is that? Yeah, can see them. No, there's a disco across the street. There's a disco across the street. It's open Friday night, and all like, you know, I didn't even know there were fried Jews in Sfat. I thought like the whole place was holy, right? No. You go in there, it's like boom, 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 right? And I'm like, oh my god, you cannot get away from this, folks. There's cars driving all the place. There's actually a, a king, a, uh, the king, the pork king or something like that, and it's open. It's an open until they sell trafe, and, and, and you've got everything that you can imagine is in Israel. It's a complete disrespect, and it's on the Holy Land. Now here's the thing. You've got the sons of Ishmael who are in the neighboring countries. Because I'm going to answer your question right now. Right? And you got the sons of Yaakov, or of Isaac, in, 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 in Israel. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. They're all from Abraham Avinu. Mm -hmm. Abraham taught certain things like modesty. Yeah. Right? Uh, respect for God. Yeah. Right? Um, uh, uh, okay, let's just start with those two, okay? And the Arabs have been great with modesty and with uh, with believing in God since forever, since that time. Mm -hmm. It's brought down in the Talmud that it says that it talked about the modesty of the Arabs. This has nothing to do with Islam. Islam wasn't even invented yet, right? Islam came centuries later. But in the Talmud, in the times of the Talmud, they already said you can learn a lot about modesty from 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 the Arabs. You know, the women are, are very modest, mm -hmm. they cover themselves up, and these mm -hmm. veils and all that. This didn't come from Islam. Mm -hmm. Women are already doing that because it's the way of modesty they learned from Abraham. You cannot grow up in the house of Abraham and Sarah, as Yishmael did, without walking off with modesty. They learned this from Sarah, right? So you've got all these Arab countries, and they've always been modest for thousands of years, right? And they've always believed in God. And along come the Jews. They come piling back in. And it's complete desecration of everything, of Shabbos, 
of the Holy Land, uh, 